Hey, everybody, and welcome. My name is Keith Gebhardt with LearnTechTraining.com. And in this lecture, we're going to go ahead and talk about VLANs and trunks. So the first half of this lecture is going to be explaining what VLANs and trunks are for. The second half will actually be configuring them. So if you're just looking to learn how to configure them, move forward. If you look at the screen, I've put the time there for you. So what is a VLAN? Well, it's first important to understand that all ports on a Cisco switch by default are in VLAN 1. And we could actually go ahead and prove this. If I go into the switch, which does not have any configurations on it at this point, go into the CLI, right? And right now I'm in user mode, so I go and enable, and here I am in privilege mode. I could do show VLAN brief, okay? This shows you every single port by default is in that VLAN one. Now remember, that is default. This cannot be changed. You can never alter the default VLAN on a Cisco switch. We can move ports out of it into other VLANs we create, but we can never exactly get rid of or change the default VLAN. That is just by Cisco's um, operating system, okay? The next thing to understand is that every VLAN represents a single broadcast domain. Do you guys know what broadcast domains are? Well, for those of you that don't, a broadcast domain is essentially a different network. And remembering that our routing devices essentially separate broadcast domains. So if I have a network over here named A and a network over here named B, for network A to communicate to B, it's got to go through the router so he could forward those packets to network B. That's basically all a broadcast domain is. It's different networks. So that brings me to my next point is where every device or port that is plugged into a switch and assigned to a VLAN must be in the same subnet. Why is that? Well, as I just explained right here with broadcast domains, because look at it here. I have a VLAN 10 and a VLAN 20. We can see VLAN 10 is a 192.168.1.10 or essentially 1.0 network. That's the network ID. So 1.10, 1.20 for these two devices. And VLAN 20 is 2.10 and 2.20 for the 2.0 network. So looking at this, we could automatically say, okay, well, this is a different network in green and this blue is a different network, right? Well, think of it like up here. So pretend VLAN 10 is A and VLAN 20 is B. For these two devices to communicate to each other, we would have to implement a router. As it sits right here, a trunk link is not going to forward traffic from any of these computers to this side. So you're sitting there wondering, well, what is the purpose of having a trunk link? Well, think of it this way. Let's just draw in another computer here. Let's pretend this computer is 192.168.3.10. So he's 3.0 network. I have another end user device over here, right? Just something sloppy. He might be 3.20. So we have one, two, three different networks. Typically, if I created three VLANs here for these three computers or networks to communicate together, now I would have to use three different cables plus that crossover, right? We'd have to have a cable for the 1.0 network. We'd have to have a link for the 2.0 network and the 3.0 network. So right off the bat, we are wasting three ports on both of these switches just to communicate these, this traffic back and forth together. Well, that's absurd. Why can't we just use a single line, hence why we have that trunk link right there, right? Which allows it to carry what we call tagged traffic. So it tags the packets going through the switch, or the frames rather, when it gets to the switch, it looks at the tag and knows how to send that traffic to the designated network and device. Now here you can see I have something called a native VLAN. Okay, The native VLAN is essentially used for trunk traffic. It's not necessary in Cisco Packet Tracer. In fact, it will work, but it's specifically important when we're talking about adding a router here. So for these networks to communicate again, going through different broadcast domains because they are different subnets, right? we would need a router. And this router would essentially be called something uh, dot one Q. It's a protocol that allows the router to communicate this trunk traffic together. And we, again, we use that native VLAN to do that. This is a protocol that we use on routers, and this is also known as routing on a stick for anyone that's familiar with that. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to go ahead and configure this switch here on the left to have multiple VLANs and assign these ports to be in the designated VLANs associated to each network. We're going to do that for both switches. This trunk link, notice it's fast Ethernet 024. So we're going to set up a trunk link on both switches again so both these networks can communicate to the other neighboring device. Again, this computer will only be able to communicate to this computer. He will not be able to communicate to this computer because we do not have a router in this network topology. All right, so let's go ahead and clear this and get started. Don't forget that I am using a straight through cable from the PC to the switch on all four computers, okay? Crossover cable from switch to switch, and you can see the ports I am using, and then both these switches are 2960 switches. So let's go ahead and begin. 
All right, so now that you learned what VLANs and trunks are used for and kind of got a perspective on them, let's go ahead and begin. First thing to notice is my computers are already configured. All I did was take the addresses I have in my topology and gave them the IP address with the Class C subnet mask. So go ahead and do that for all four of the computers. We do not need to worry about default gateways because we are not routing. So once we have our computers configured, go into the left switch here. And let me just exit out of this mode right here. Okay, so right now you should be looking at a screen like this. We're going to say enable to get into privilege mode, config T to get into global configuration mode. And we need to create our VLAN. So we have three VLANs. Remember, VLAN 10 for the one network, VLAN 20 for the second network, and VLAN 30 for our native traffic. So all we got to do is say VLAN 10, name, and we could say network 1, something simple. And then we could say VLAN 20, name, network uh, 2, something simple. And then VLAN 30, we're going to name that native, something simple. Exit that. So right now, we have three VLANs created in our VLAN database. If I do show VLAN brief, you will see we now have a VLAN 20 with the name network 1, network 2, network 3. Mind you, if you create a VLAN without giving it a name, it'll default to its VLAN ID. So it'd be VLAN 0030, VLAN 20 or 0020, et cetera, et cetera. So it's nice to name them so you could at least keep track of them, especially when you're working in the real world. It just makes things a lot more easy. So from here, now we just need to configure the interfaces. So if I just move this over and look at the interfaces on my switch, you can see this computer, 1.10, is plugged into Fast Ethernet 01 on the switch. 2.10 is plugged into Fast Ethernet 02 on the switch, right? So if I go into interface FA01, I just need to say switch port mode access, okay? Here we have a few different modes, access dynamic trunk. But for VLANs, we want it to only access that VLAN. At this point, we have to say switch port mode one more time. And this time we're going to say switch port. Okay, if I hit question mark, you're going to see what? Access, trunk, et cetera, et cetera. Well, we're going to say access, okay? And then we give it the VLAN ID, so VLAN 10. It's that easy. So interface FA01 is done. Let's go into interface FA02. Now, again, we're going to do switch port mode access. And I'm just hitting the tab key to finish spelling this out for you guys. And then we're going to do switch port access VLAN 20. Now we need to set up the trunk link, which is on FA024. So we go into interface FA024, and we do switch port. Now this is different, okay, mode. This time we have to tell it to be a trunk link. And now you can see we're going down. Also, we need to tell it what to designate as that native VLAN. So switch port. If I hit the question mark here, we can see what we're doing. Trunk, okay. If I hit the question mark, we can see we have a native, and then we give it the VLAN 30 ID, and that is done. So right now, all of our configurations for this left switch are done. It's that easy, but we have to save it. So go back to privilege mode, and it's going to be a copy, running config, startup config, okay? Now, there is a do or a WR for write memory. That is old. If any of you are pursuing your new Cisco CCNA exams, you will get the question wrong if it asks you to save it and you do not use the new implemented saving. What this is doing is saving it from NVRAM to RAM, or I'm sorry, RAM, which is a running config, to NVRAM, which is your startup config, so it does not get lost, non-volatile memory. So now that we are done on that left switch, let's go ahead and configure this right switch quickly. And again, it should be nice and simple. If I go down, enable config T, okay? VLAN 10, name, network 1. VLAN 20, okay? Name, network 2. And VLAN 30, name, uh, native. Just keep it simple. Exit that, okay? Now we go interface, FA01, switch port, mode, access. And we go to switch port, access, whoops, switch port. S-W-I-T-C-H, switch port, access, VLAN 10, exit, interface FA02, switch port, mode, access, switch port, access, VLAN 20. Now we need to exit that. Now we got to finish setting up our trunk link because as it is right now, you'll see the link states are not going to be able to communicate together till we have a trunk established here. So if I go in interface FA024, switch port, mode, trunk okay switch port trunk native vlan 30 exit 
So now that we saw it went out, it is now restored, meaning it'll carry that trunked traffic. One thing I want to show you, let's go back to privilege mode. I just did a control Z there to do so. Show VLAN brief. And again, we can see our networks and our ports are assigned to these networks now. We move those networks out. Typically in a real environment, you never want to keep all your ports assigned to VLAN 1 because Anyone in IT knows that by default, all ports on a Cisco switch are in VLAN 1. So as an added security measure, it's not perfect, okay? As an added security measure, we usually create a miscellaneous VLAN just to dump all these unused ports in it, turn them all to access ports, and shut them down. Why do we do all three of those? One, because anyone can plug into a port on a switch thinking it's left in VLAN 1 and then be able to do things. If it's set to anything but access, the switch might be able to take over and think it's a trunk port using VTP, and it could really do some harm on your local area network. So we always set them to access so it can't default to trunk, okay? And we always shut them down so those ports can't be used unless we tell it to be used. But for this lab, that's a little bit more advanced, and we should be good. Let's go ahead and test our network connectivity. If I go to this uh, computer, I'm at the 1.10 computer, and I'm going to try communicating to 1.20. Remember, the same subnet. So if I ping... Right here, 192.168.1.20, you will see we have communication. Why is that? Because, again, it's in the same subnet. What if I try to communicate to the 2.20 computer? Do you think it'll work? Ping, 192.168.2.20. No, it will not. Why? It's different VLAN means different subnet means different broadcast domain. Okay, guys? Very awesome. Very good. This lecture can be found in part of my full Cisco ICND-1 course, where you will learn everything required to know for configuring different devices and troubleshooting different devices for your CSENT exam. The link is in the bottom. Plus, you will also get a special coupon rate to only take the course for $10. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Please do not forget to subscribe, like, and if you have any trouble, add a comment and I will help you. Also, if you just want to leave me some love, guys, come on, <laughs> like it and leave some love. Drop them in the comments. Thank you for watching. I'll see you later.